Hi, Isabel. Hi, Lakishma. Hello, everyone is watching this. I am Lakishma. I am from what you know as Atlantis. For those of you who do not know who I am, I am an ascended master. I've had a very close relationship with Kimberly in Atlantis. And I'm here to bring forth this ancient knowledge and these esoteric teachings to assist whoever is watching this and you, Isabel, to assist you in the transition of the new earth that is here. Much of the knowledge from these times in my existence is coming forth now into your time continuum. And much of this knowledge is ready to be brought forth. So I'm here to bring forth this knowledge from Atlantis to you. And I'm so pleased to be here today, coming forth again in this direct manner. It has been a while since I've come forth in this direct manner. Kimberly has been very busy. <laughs> she has many, we would say, missions to explore here. So he's, she's exploring many of them at the same time, but I'm so pleased to come forth in a regular appearance in this way. And I know I've been visiting you, Isabel, and you know that. Yes, I wore, I wore the color dress of the green and the blues that you show me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I teased uh, Kimberly that I was going to gush about her. And you were going to gush about Kimberly. <laughs> well, we're in good company because I always do that with her. <laughs> you know, sometimes yeah. she's a little embarrassed. <laughs> I know, that's what's so funny about it. <laughs> My child, I'm so welcome. happy to see you. I'm so happy to be with you in this manner too, by the way. I hope you feel it too. Of course, my dear. It's not by accident that you were here. And you have this connection to Kimberly and these teachings and the others out there watching also. There are many people out there who have a strong, we would say, connection with Atlantis in this time. It was the time of great awakening on Earth. It was the first wave mm. of this grand awakening. It was a time in the human consciousness where beings from other worlds came down to assist in our awakening, just like they are doing now, currently. And it's not always the way you think. They are not always in physical ships in the sky. It is very different to what you think, although there are some. They are here always. But sometimes they come here in energetic levels, so a lot of you don't see them in the skies. They are walking amongst you. And for hmm. well, the surprise, which many of you, some of you already know, many of you are the ET. In fact, the majority of you have those aspects of the lives and other planets within you. Surprise. <laughs> um. So Atlantis was the first wave of the awakening. Do you see a lot of the parallels of this time of awakening here in this time continuum to when you were alive in Atlantis? That is correct. And this is why it has been named the new earth. And this is why me and many teachers are coming forth in such direct manner. Because now, it is time for this great awakening on earth 
just like it was in Atlantis, just like it was in Egypt and other time periods, you would say time throughout your history. Hmm. Much of you have been asleep for a long time, but it was for a reason. You are now at the level where you can transcend the limitations that you had as a whole and individually you're waking up. Mm -hmm. But it's affecting groups within your consciousness and these groups in large affect the collective consciousness. But the new earth will not be realized as a whole. It will take time for that. The new earth is experienced with the individual. And as the individual fully lives in the new earth, you'll find that we would say, a best analogy would say the bubble that you live in would spread to other people around you. Mm. This is why you see people so awake in your terminology and some people so asleep. It is a process. And did you experience the same process? Um, seeing people asleep in your society and then awake? It was very different in our society. We lived a very simple life. It was not the Atlantis at the start. Okay. Great civilization. You grew into that. It wasn't always like that. It was very simple. Mm -hmm. In my history, my dad, in your terminology, would be seen so much, somewhat of a, a mayor, like a, a leader. Mm -hmm. okay of where I lived. It was very simple. There was not any technology, but it was when we were visited by Thoth, you know, as Thoth and other beings from his world, that they passed down these ascension teachings to my father. I was just a little girl, Aww. but they passed on these teachings and I grew up and we were, of course, we were at fear at start because we never, in our awareness, in our history, there was no recorded history of us ever being visited by beings at this stage. And we passed down these ascension teachings and they were to rule over us. They were to assist us, to help with our awakening, much like it is happening now. So these beings, as I grew up, and then we would say the leadership turned to me when I was at the age. I continued my close interactions with Thoth and we built a great grand civilization. This was the start of the great civilization of Atlantis. But there were different stages of Atlantis. It wasn't always the great civilization, but at the start, at this point of time in Atlantis history, we built up Atlantis and it was not a war place. That was more in the later stages of Atlantis. It was peaceful. Even though I am referred to as a ruler, I didn't rule over the people. There was no power over. We all lived in unity. All the children, everyone there knew of the technologies. We were taught how to connect to beings of the light, the galactic beings. We were taught all this knowledge I'm passing on to you. That you are not supposed to ever live alone. Everyone is there assisting you. However, in our evolution, as our, what would you would call evolution, our vibration, was not at the level that you are today because you are quite advanced beings. You've lived so many lives and you have expanded as a result. And as such, we needed to use other tools to assist our communication. We had galactic crystals, grids would place in our towns and our, throughout our civilization to assist in healing, to assist in our communications. 
but that is no longer needed in your society because you're at the level you don't need such tools. Mm -hmm. You just need to go within and you are there already. You've expanded to the point. You are advanced beings. So even though we had all this knowledge and we lived in harmony and unity with the universe, we became fully empowered. We still needed tools to assist us. Huh. Because we are not at the expanded level that you are now, you see. With all the lives you've lived, with each life you expand. So that is why some of you wish you lived or want to go back and live in those time periods. You do not need to. This is why we are bringing this knowledge forth to you. And this new earth will be greater than any civilization in the past because we were not at that expanded level. We had the awareness, but our soul part of us, our essence was not expanded and expressed in many lives as you have. But in saying that, many of us from Atlantis times, we came forth through other worlds. This is an entry point where many beings from other worlds came forth onto your planet. Mm. Through the reincarnation, what you call reincarnation method. Mm -hmm. This is when many of these beings were brought here to the earth. And this is when it all started. And much of it started of the history of the galactics here, the parts of you. And this is why so many of you, and we would say the majority of all of you watching this because you are drawn to such teachings, it is because you have lived on other worlds. And this is why it helped with our civilization. As many of the beings brought forth in Atlantis times originated from other worlds. So we had a great mix of beings on our planet that assisted us, just like what is happening now with your mm -hmm. younger generation. The younger generations that are being born onto the earth at a very high vibration, and it's not by accident. Many of them come forth from other worlds. To assist then they are not we would say beings being brought forth in this world now they may not be a hundred percent in your terminology they contain aspects of different portions you would say for you to get some comprehension mm -hmm. beings from other worlds and this is why the younger generations now being born they have advanced abilities and you can sense that they are different. This is why. They are here to assist in the new earth. It's a very so exciting, exciting time. Yeah. And you lived through it too. That creating. I, that I did. And I feel honored that I was at the start of this. And I was able to continue passing these teachings down through my generations, through society. Children would easily and freely communicate with their, what you call guides. Mm -hmm. The children learned they were never alone. What you call imaginary friends. It was well known in awareness in this time of Atlantis the beings are all around us and we can access them it was a wonderful society everyone was living to their full potential was harnessing who they really were But like I said, it was assistance that allowed us to have this knowledge. And this is why I've come forth in each time of great awakening on earth. 
with Kimberly to bring forth these teachings once again to help in these transitions to allow you to fully remember and to become fully awake mm -hmm. because that is why you were here this is why you were drawn to these teachings you've already chosen it can you um so i'm very excited for the book kimberly is writing with you or channeling and i so the ex um a little bit that i read the paragraph you talked about how it took a while but you were able to control the elements of wind i believe was one of the elements that you could um I don't know if it was really controlled, but I would think you would connect to the wind element, uh, spirit and, and uh, work with the different elements from Gaia. Is that what you were um, expressing to Kimberly? Yes, but the most predominant element that we worked with was water. Was water. As water surrounded us, water contains much knowledge Mm -hmm. water covers the majority of your planet we were taught how to change the molecules of the water just like some science has been discovered in your recent time continuum some of this knowledge is already out there to help with the frequency change of the planet to assist in the collective consciousness as it was affected on a grand scale in my time. We were taught to connect to the water, to put our hands in the water, to bring love into the water. And this affected not just it, this water spread across the planet and affected all who would drink from it, who would play in it. This water was sacred to us. And as such, we use this a lot in our society. We drew on the powers of the water in our society because we knew how sacred it was. You are made up with the majority of water. Mm -hmm. Water is sacred, water is divine, such as all of the elements. Mm. Water assists in the, we would say, transition to connect to the divine through water. Water is fluid. Mm -hmm. Water is in your, in your body. It flows throughout all the planet. It is powerful. It is rejuvenating. It is healing. You can imprint codes into the water. To uh, this is already happening in some of your alternate medicines. Mm -hmm. It is already being done. You can put these codes into the water to assist in any ailment, to assist in your ascension. Mm. Water has many uses. But at the moment in your society, from a lower perspective, we would say it is suffering. Mm -hmm. But from a highest perspective, it is all happening the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to get to the point of where it is being polluted, mm -hmm. not with having people not realize how sacred it is. It will get mm -hmm. to the point where people will realize how sacred and how much it is needed. Mm -hmm. And this is where the shift will come in the collective consciousness. Many of you see what is happening in the environment is wrong. Yes, from a lower perspective, you are seeing the water being poisoned. You are seeing the forests 
being cut down, mm -hmm. was seeing poison in your skies. But there's a great purpose for it all. And there's no need to be in fear. It is happening the way it's supposed to. Gaia knows what is happening. She's also expanding. But the most sacred element to assist is water. Because you are water. Mm -hmm. Water is very powerful. Yes, very magical. Well, even in science, um, with how it dilutes and dissolves chemicals, you know, I think the scientific community does know um, so critical. So it's it's interesting um, to work with water. So. Everything I had read that there are codes in everything. So like when you said you were putting codes in the water, was it setting intentions with the water? Like I intend for this water to love and healing properties of this water and just intend thought and energy. That is one way you can do it by putting mm -hmm. your intentions out there. But there were other methods that we used, such as singing. Hmm. So you can print these codes, you would say, into the water many different ways. The easiest way, the most simplest way, is to do the simple intention. If your vibration is heightened as you are focusing on love, this vibration carries forth in the water. Mm -hmm. And as such, that love will be returned to you through the water. You will feel the oneness that exists. Is it why many religions bless the water, baptize being, you know, babies in the water? They have their own reasons, but yes. Mm -hmm. In your history, there's been many religions, cultures, who recognize water as sacred. This is why many of you feel so connected to water. And you feel re-energized when you're in water. But yes. you can still achieve this from other elements. As we understand that all of you are near water. But recognize the power of water. The water that you drink, you can send intentions. So you can heighten the vibration of any water that you drink. And as such, the foods that you eat contain water also. This assists on raising your vibration. The water is powerful, you see it. How the moon affects the tides. This is why many of you also feel affected in the moon periods because you are also water. This shows mm. to you your oneness with the water, with the elements. As the tides get affected, so do you. You are one with all the elements. And you will soon realize this on a much larger scale. This new earth that is here and it's being realized by many of you. 
you will feel drawn more back into nature. You will start to remember all the elements and how they can assist you. Mm. And all the spirits, we would say, the infinite intelligence that exists within all the elements. There's infinite intelligence all around you. It's all there waiting for you. Just for us to notice. <laughs> Many of you already know, such as many from your indigenous cultures, they already know how sacred it is, these elements. They already can tap into this wisdom that exists within these elements. There's much to learn from them. Mm. But it is time now in our society When all these knowings are coming forth, this ancient knowledge, these teachings of how the universe works, how you work as a being, all the knowledge, all this, what we call metaphysical spiritual knowledge that you know of, it all originates from these esoteric teachings that's passed down. Mm. Of course, many teachings have their own unique spin on it. But at the fundamental level, the teachings, these ascension teachings, allows you to discover your true power, your true nature, and why you were here, and how you can utilize all the powers of the universe, not for power over anything, but just for self-empowerment. Mm -hmm. And if you wish to assist others on their own journeys. You mentioned singing. And singing, I'm sure, was to do with the frequency and vibration. To heighten, to raise an element vibration. Is that why you would sing? It is right. Because with the voice is a vibration. Mm -hmm. Everything resonates with the vibration. You are a vibration or energy is a vibration. Right. By singing. We allow this vibration to carry forth. It's common in many of your cultures. The power of singing mm -hmm. is known. We understood the vibration of joy. And I've shown Kimberly this times before, and I'm showing her again how we would hold hands and join in joyous dancing and singing. The celebration of life. And as we did so, our vibrations would rise. She just recently channeled um, Archangel Michael and she um, hummed or sang, right? And I said, Kimberly, the frequency is just like the tuning bowls, of, uh, the singing bowls. Said, and you did that with your voice. She said, yes, apparently if I had this ability. <laughs> I said, you were spot on. <laughs> but all of you can access this. Yes, Kimberly channels this, but you can also do that. As all of you can channel. All of you can communicate with all the beings. Mm -hmm. So Kimberly's had a lot of we would say experience with this. This is why she's able to tap into it so easily, we would say, without any prior conscious knowledge of this. It just 
happened when she was at the vibrational level to remember to tap into these abilities that she already had. We would say there are light codes, source light codes at different civilizations, not just on earth, but elsewhere, tapped into the knowledge and the power of using frequency, vibration. Sound is very powerful. Sound is a creative force. What about light, Lakishma? I know like there's different, um, light is also a wave, um, and there's different like ultraviolet light and infrared light and um, science has definitely figured out like um, different properties of light have different abilities. Did Atlantis play with light? We did understand that light is energy. We learnt that there is no empty space. Mm -hmm. What you call empty space is just what we would call light plasma particles that exists. Some of you can see them moving around. There is no empty space. Mm -hmm. We were taught a lot. And we actually, in our society, we had special crystals. But these are crystals that were not from this earth. Hmm. Existed us. Tapping in to the natural resources of the universe. It allowed us to tap into more powers of the elements. To assist in the ascension of our society. But like I said, these crystals are not needed now in your society. Mm -hmm. It will come one day where science will recognize more and more on what is out there. Science is a very new modality compared to all the lives in the history of you. Oh, I never thought of it like that. So what about alchemy? Alchemy seems very old and similar to science. Yes. Alchemy, using different elements to assist on a change, whether it is chemical, whether it is vibrational, mm -hmm. it creates a change. This happens on so many levels already. Mm -hmm. Two forces come together to create a new one. There are different ways and manifestations that this occurs. If you are in a fear state and you bring a vibration of love, you change your vibration. This is a simple form of alchemy. Alchemy exists in many different ways. It exists in your material, you would say, products. It mm -hmm. happens on an energetic level. There are many different aspects to alchemy and the processes. And science has explored it in a certain perspective, but there's other aspects of alchemy that science is not aware of. Mm -hmm. But yes, all things have a vibration. All material things have a vibration. Mm -hmm. There are many things that can affect the vibration of certain solid matter or light matter. Hmm. 
did you guys um, have schools in Atlantis? And did all children go to school? So in our society, the children did come together. But we taught these ascension teachings to them, to all the children. Mm -hmm. It was common knowledge amongst all of society. Those who are open to learning more about it, the knowledge was open and the schools taught this. And they picked up and they were able to utilize the knowledge so easily. Teaching them at that young age allowed them to fully embrace it and to live the, their full life fully empowered. The schools were different to what it is now. It did not teach dogma. Mm -hmm. It did not teach ways to fit in, to control the children. We taught them ways to live in the society. Of course, it was different before the Ascension teachings came to us, but when the Ascension teachings were passed down to us, much changed, as well as the schools. Mm -hmm. We became more enlightened, and as such, our whole society changed. Of course, it did not happen overnight. It was a process. It took time to integrate all these understandings and technologies mm -hmm. into our society. And there'll be a time when technologies known in ancient times will be brought forth here to assist you. When you are ready, you will discover such technologies. But technology are not necessarily needed. Mm -hmm. They can assist you, advance you at a rapid rate, but you can still do it without it. But it is fun to do and explore these technologies. Yes. <laughs> you have a particular interest with such technologies. I do. I sense it. Yes. But now I understand it's to assist in the ascension. Um, for parts of the society. So I'm guessing that when you had the technologies, not everyone in your society used that technology. Well, it depends. There were certain technologies for certain things, the crystals we would have. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. were all around our main cities. Okay. What you would call energy lines. Mm -hmm. They helped to increase the connection. So we were more able to access the universe. But we also had special crystals used for healing. Kimberly, which you might feel embarrassed now, but I always talk about her. She knew it was coming. <laughs> On some level. And yes, she was my daughter. And she looked after much of this knowledge. She is what you would call a high priestess. She looked after this knowledge to allow mm -hmm. it to remain sacred. She used crystals to heal to assist the body to ascend. And this is why she's channeling this information because she was there. She's able to access it more easily.
So, for, like for healing, we talk about the meridians, and we talk about the energy. We talk about sound, healing, there's magnetism, there's crystals, and there's just a variety of different ways to heal the body. Was it also a lot of modalities in Atlantis to heal and ascend? A lot of different tools? During my time there, it wasn't an expanded modality range, you would say. Hmm. But there was some modalities. But it was mostly used with these crystals to harness the energy of these crystals. It should be hard to explain here as these, we would say, the powers of these crystals were not of this earth. So how mm. it affected the body is different. But Kimberly, as she originated, not here, she was one of the ones that came through from a different world. She had other abilities coming forth that assisted. She worked in unison with the crystals, mm. such as many others that come forth on Atlantis. And throughout history, using their own unique abilities. Even within our group, I see different abilities coming forth. And I always, I say, it's just like another piece to the puzzle that will assist. That is right. I mean, of course, our society was very different to yours. Mm -hmm. And we are not saying to copy our society. We are saying that these understandings and this knowledge would benefit you for the highest good to mm -hmm. know this knowledge. You do not need to know all the workings of our society. It is the basis of the foundations behind it. The knowingness of oneness, knowing that you're not alone, the knowing the power of the elements. It is all there. Mm -hmm. We did not live in fear. We understood what fear does. These beings were our friends. We lived a life in a state of joy, empowerment. You can imagine, it was very exciting. The world as you know it changed, just like it is doing now. Things are shifting. Much of this knowledge is now coming forth. Many of you are discovering the powers within you, the abilities that you have, that you innately have, but have laid dormant. And you are now going more within and accessing these abilities. This is why so many of you, which you refer to as light workers, are being more, you would say, aware now that they are light workers. Because it is the time in this new earth. We chose to be somewhat asleep and now it is time to be awake. You have chosen this time to access your abilities. You are here to assist in this transition in some way or another. Mm -hmm. But first, it is ascension is within yourself to become fully empowered. To remember all that you are. To remember you are one with all that is and the elements. And that we are all here to assist you and the elements. Um. 
Um, did everyone work with the elements in your society? Or I would, I would think they would be attracted to it. The majority of the people in our civilization worked with water. Water was the main element that we worked with in our society. Yeah. Water was easily readable for us. We were surrounded mm -hmm. by water. Water was easily accessible to us. So yes, water was the main element that we all worked with. Hmm. But yes, everyone understood the powers of the elements. And that we are supposed to all work together. So to use these elements to assist us. This is why Gaia was here assisting us. She provides these elements for us to assist in our ascension and in our remembering. But many of you see it as a given. See it as just a thing to exist and live on and to stand on or to swim in. A lot of you do not actually realize exactly the divine nature that it is. Many of you are drawn to the elements, but you don't know why, and this is why. Because when you connect to the elements, you connect to the oneness of all that is. You are starting to remember the knowledge that you once knew of in a conscious awareness of this power. You resonate being within the elements. It allows you to tap more into your abilities into your true nature. I would say it is a conductor to assist mm. you to connect to the divine, which you are. And this will be known more in your society, not just in your indigenous cultures and people mm -hmm. in the world. This knowledge is bringing brought forth more. It is an exciting time to be alive. You're embracing all that you are while still being. Some of you in this material world, we would say, and there's many constraints to this place in your society. But this doesn't have to hold you back. It is your choice. It is your belief system. You can choose to transcend this. There are elements wherever you are located around the world. Mm -hmm. If you're not located in water, there'll be earth, there'll be forest, there'll be light. There is oneness in all, because all is oneness. And this is what I taught. Being a ruler in Atlantis, I would assist passing on these teachings directly from Thoth. I would teach oneness the power of oneness. And I know in your society, there is perceived separation. Mm -hmm. The society, much of it lives in duality. This is the old dimensions and you are transcending this. This is the new earth. But it's about realizing at first within that duality does not exist. The awareness of it, you can transcend further. Live this experience of non-duality. You will find things will start shifting around you as a result. Mm.
it's easier to say than do sometimes, I find. And then I bring it back to neutrality. I realize it's just my perception and that's self-talk. But sometimes you get caught up in the duality. Sort of like when you were saying about um, the pollution of the water and the skies, but it's all meant to be from a higher perspective instead of saying that is wrong. Those of you that are expired to change conditions. If you're expired out of love and not fear, then it can be a positive change. Things are shifting. You already see technologies being invented to clean up the oceans. As you become fully realized of who you are, you may receive guidance to assist in certain ways with the elements. Not because it's wrong, but you realize that transition is needed. Transcendence is the next step. You can assist in this. And the ascension of elements also. When you connect with nature, There are beings there too. It is infinite intelligence. who may appear to you in different forms. But you can receive messages. And certain beings that reside within all the different elements may have a certain perspective to assist mm. in the caring of that element. To assist not only in expansion of you, but also the element. You're all meant to work together. Even the beings are meant to work with you to assist each other. But it's all happening the way it's supposed to be. Practice this. Practice going into the elements. Practice connecting and see what messages come. Many of you have folklore, we would say, about certain nature spirits. Some of you see them as fairy tales, but they are in your collective consciousness for a reason, as they do exist. Mm -hmm. They may not be in the way that you think they are, they are existing, but they are there and they are all there to assist you. It is about opening your mind to all the infinite intelligence that's available to you. Even for Kimberly, even she was shocked. When she physically saw with her own eyes, nature spirits. Even though she knew all that existed, to see is quite shocking, we would say because it's so much in your folklore and some of you question whether it's real or not but it is real some of you can see us experience us in a direct manner do not be afraid do not be shocked it's to assist you to allow you to know the infinite intelligence is really all around you. Mm. Sometimes to come forth in this direct manner assists you to give you the evidence needed. What is out there? Practice your communications. And Isabel, you do have these abilities. I do connect with everything. I haven't connected with uh, trees in 
inspired me to, because I love hiking. I love going into the woods. So I think, I think I'm going to put my hands in the water and talk to the trees and see what messages come through. There is infinite intelligence everywhere. This is what the new earth is. Realizing, mm. remembering that this infinite intelligence is all around you to empower you. Not just me or my other teachers who would say in human or humanoid form. The elements are out there. Infinite intelligence is all out there for you. Practice this. And all of you watching, Practice with the elements that are most accessible to you or the elements that are most drawn to you. It may even be the wind. It can be as simple as feeling the wind on your skin. Any sensations that come to that. Focusing on the element as it touches your skin. Sense the energy of this element as it touches your skin. Sen feel all the vibrations, energies, sensations, experiment. You will feel recharged and energized. It is because it is allowing you to remember your power. It is allowing you to tap into your true nature. It is not the trees giving you this energy is not the elements giving you this energy. It, it, they are just allowing you to tap into your innate power that you already have. Hmm. You are am, I giving, am I giving any energy to the tree? Well, you are one. Uh. No beings give other beings energy. Some beings just allow other beings to help to realize their power, to tap into their power, the energy you feel, the love that you feel, the connection that you feel when you're in nature. Mm -hmm. It's not the trees doing that. It's not the nature doing that. It is them just allowing you to remember and to feel your true nature. This is who you are. This connection, this vibration, this energy you feel is actually your true nature. This is all it is. Huh. It allows you to connect more to your true state. This is with all of us that come forth. You feel our energies sometimes around you. I do. You are accessing the oneness. It is allowing you to remember who you truly are. Huh. It's all an empowerment process. There is just but oneness. I know it's so this is what it feels like, Lakishma. It feels like I know the concept. I feel the concept at times. And in this dimension, it's still, it's like I kind of go back and forth, you know, separate, no, we're, we're one. Separate, no, we're one. Where I am right now? As you go through your ascension journey, as you go through all the layers of the dimension, uh -huh. until you're permanently at a level where you do not need to go back, you can bounce from different dimensions because you're not fully there yet. This is why. Mm -hmm. But once you're at a certain level, we would say, a vibrationally level, it just means you've gone more deeply within and you're being one with all that you are and all that is. You become one with source and all that is. The more you do that, there will be no need to go back into an older dimension. You will not be able to. 
you will not be able to go backwards. You cannot go backwards. When you have reached these points, these specific points, you will not go backwards. You are getting tastes of higher dimensions mm -hmm. through your journey. And this is needed to fully understand the lessons there in each dimension, to fully understand the lessons in your evolutionary journey. Mm. You can only wobble. Sometimes you feel you are in a much lower dimension, but if you reach a certain level, you are not. You are just feeling contrast more deeply because you are at such a high level vibrationally. Oh. But you are not. If you compare yourself to when you were younger, we would say, even though you may feel emotion deeply, you're still at a high vibration. You do not stay in that vibration for long. You're able to come out of that and see the higher perspective. This just shows you, you are not in that lower dimension. Mm -hmm. You visit aspects of the dimension because you need it for your evolution. There are still lessons there to be learnt for your evolution. Once you have mm -hmm. learnt all the lessons, there is no need to go back and you will not go back. I loved coming to you today. I love hanging out with you. I love you tremendously, Lakishma. I love you. You're in my life. And all of you watching, we are always here for you. And I'm very excited for the developments that are coming. I will bid you farewell for now. But to know that I'm always with you, as you know, Isabel, and all of you watching, we are always here for you. And we love you deeply. Remember that you are one. There is no separation. Farewell. Farewell. Oh. How is having mom? <laughs> Why did I not know she was going to do that? <laughs> For those of you watching, she has a habit of doing this. <laughs> I can't keep any secrets <laughs> with her. Oh, she, her energy is uh, it's just... For those of you who do channel and Isabel, you probably feel this. Just some beings have so many different energies. So give Yeshua. It's just this love coming over me with Lakeshma. It's love, but also it's like this deep grounding peace. Yes. I can't really explain it. So I just feel so <sighs> yes. mellowed and yes. so grounded, I would say. It's a different energy, like all the beings, once you get more sensitive to the energies, you you start to notice the subtleties between the different beings. Yeah. It's oh. cool. It's so cool. Yeah, and it's just, I just feel like hugging a tree right now, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I live just here on the ocean, and I'm just, I don't know if I feel like during that session, I kept looking. I remember I kept looking to the ocean just here. I can see it from where I'm sitting, and I just was like, I want to go there. <laughs> <coughs> so it's so funny, but how did you experience it? I thought it was really cool. Um, but she speaks like, uh, if, if people are listening to you now, but like your voice is different from her. 
And it's so funny because when you trans channel, which means like, you know, as you know, those of you who are watching, it means I'm not just listening to the being, I invite the being to actually come within my body and consciousness. So I'm kind of there in the background. Sometimes I can hear what's going on and I know, but I can't really control what comes out of my mouth and what happens basically. So um, it's an interesting experience. But like when I'm channeling, I feel like it's just me. To those of you practicing or just at the start of this, know that the more you do channeling, you may come across doubts, for instance, on your abilities because you feel when you're in the channeling state that it's just you. I mean, you know it's not you because it's intelligence that's coming out. These words are not you. You could never come up with this stuff, which I know I can't. <laughs> so, you know, um, it's an interesting experience. When you watch it back, it's always interesting. So I look forward to watching this back. And seeing what hey, it uh, yes. did you hear that you used to work with crystals? Yes, she actually, I, do, I did already know that. She has shown me that before and, and discussed that while I was. I didn't know she was going to make it public, but as you know, with Lakeshima, she likes to um, bring everything out into the open when it comes to me and our history together. I love it. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the crystals. They're really cool. I know you have to go. So, bye everyone. Mm. No, I'm glad you got a lot out of it, Isabel. I know you're like connecting with her as well. I do. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, I'm off now. So, these Lakeshima teachings will be available monthly if you're a Patreon member. So, if you just jump onto Patreon forward slash Beings of the Light with Kimberly you can join there and access all the future um, ones there as well. Okay. All right. Well, I'm off. Farewell. Bye. <laughs> Take care. Love you and love everyone watching. See you later. Bye.